insists on moving in mysterious and suspicious ways and in this TED talk I will Hi friends! Hi, thank you for watching. My name is Mia and this is my virtual vanity, a place where we both love makeup and we're quite critical of it. And today, I just want to say, Colourpop is being kind of sus. Colourpop has been doing some weird shit. They've been moving suspiciously. They've done some stuff that doesn't sit well with me and I wanted to make a dedicated video about it because I've mentioned uh, some of the issues that I have had with them in the past and I've kind of mentioned some of the critiques regarding their latest business model and the things that they have done lately but I haven't quite talked about it in detail in quite some time. So first thing first, I want to um, credit my inspiration for this video and that is from Amanda, from Amanda, Amanda Bibi, God, I don't know how to pronounce her YouTube name. Her video about Colourpop kind of showing that they do not care about their customers with a deeper skin tone and I will leave a link to that because credit with credit is due. She makes some excellent points. So Colourpop has been a staple in the beauty community for quite some time. Um, first growing from a small indie brand to a titan of a brand that is well known both outside and inside the US. There's a lot of hype behind every single one of their releases. They're giant at this point. They're kind of what an indie brand aspires to be in terms of sizing, scope, and reach. However, it seems that they've started having a bit of a downward trajectory. They're starting to have a bit of a downfall. And I want to discuss what has been going on that has caused them to lose so much public favor and so much goodwill from the makeup community at large. Well, the woke-ish makeup community. The makeup community that kind of cares about makeup beyond makeup. Let's talk about all of the weird shit that Colourpop has been doing in one single video. The first thing that I want to mention is that inclusivity does not start nor end at foundation at concealer shades. A lot of brands say that they're inclusive because they provide this, but it's a bit of a, an illusion. It's performative wokeness, it's optics. Because in the moment where you only provide foundations and concealers, which are the most discussed visibly regarding um, shade range, but you do not provide bronzers, powders, eyeshadow, uh, face products, cheap products that work for the shade range that you're offering in your foundation, it's very clear to me that you care more about the optics than actually serving a part of the market. There have been signs for quite a while now that Colourpop is not as inclusive as it once were and that it does not care as much as it used to care about catering to all skin tones. For me, the first sign was during the Colourpop Me Black movement that was started by, I believe, Neon MUA and Killer King on Twitter and Instagram. What happened was that a lot of black beauty creators noticed that Colourpop was not really posting anyone that passed the paper bag test, that their feed was overwhelmingly white. When you claim to be inclusive to all skin tones, having your Instagram feed be overwhelmingly white goes contrary to what you say that your mission statement is. It shows a bit of hypocrisy. People started calling them out in the comments, but there was no good reply from the social media management of Colourpop, nor was there an action taken. Sometimes actions speak louder than words. They maybe didn't want to put out a statement, but they should have started sprinkling in people of different skin tones. That didn't happen. A moment in which uh, these two um, black male beauty creators decided to take matters in their own hands and apply a bit of that good old social media pressure and they created the tag Colourpop Me Black, which is a variation of Colourpop Me tag, which is a very popular Instagram tag that the official Colourpop account trolls through to retweet, retweet, um, I'm, stick, I'm staying on Twitter too much, to repost the looks from. That tag got a lot, a lot of traction 
and still ColourPop did not say anything. Eventually, the tag turned viral with a lot of coverage and only then did ColourPop acknowledge that they should do better. And they started posting more creators of color. But to me, that was alarming that the thing that it took them to post creators of color was to be called out on social media, to have this whole emotional workload from black creators to demand that they make good on their words that they're inclusive. It's a lot of uh, emotional labor involved from people that should not have to do this. Creators should not have to tell a brand, yo, put your feed where your mouth is and be consistent. For me, that was the first sign. A thing that irked me well before that was when I found out about ColourPop's origins and their approach to makeup. Go watch LS's ColourPop history video. It's illuminating. I used to believe that ColourPop was, you know, homegrown in someone's house or whatever, and eventually it grew. But no, it was made by rich people that were very trans savvy and they profited off the market for that. Which, you know, there's nothing wrong with rich people creating companies and serving the market as long as they're providing a good product. That's basically 90% of companies. That's how 90% of businesses happen with capital. But it left a bit of a, a sour taste in my mouth because they didn't necessarily talk about that a lot. It seemed to me like they wanted to showcase this social media presence of being very, very buddy-buddy, color pop family, very hip, very young, uh, very parasocial relationship-y, when the first instinct was not, oh, we want to show our vision of beauty, but rather we want to get in the industry because it makes good money and we saw a niche that we could exploit, which again, valid, but the difference between the approach and how it was born grated on my nerves a lot. Then there was an interview that one of the creators of ColourPop made with an, uh, a magazine and she said that they're following the fast fashion model for ColourPop where they are producing everything in their own warehouses by demand uh, and so they can respond very quickly to changing trends on both social media and real life, which Valid, um, I think that's really clever to be able to produce everything in house so you can adapt. I was not a fan of the fast fashion comment because to me that showed that they value more quick term profit than they do having a vision and actually providing quality product to the market. Because quality product and quality design does not come up because you see a quick trend and then a week later you've got a palette to produce. That's, that's superficial, unless you're some kind of Stephen Hawking level genius in makeup, you are not going to come up with your best work and be quick and on trend. This fast fashion um, approach started being very evident in the last two or three years when they started being very fast paced with the releases. Again, something that really left a sour taste in my mouth because for a long, long time, there was a new color pop release every couple of days, every week, and everyone was getting tired. They were flooding the market, hoping that something stuck, while at the same time, slightly discontinuing a bunch of products. There was a lack of transparency, there was a lack of focus. They really wanted to pump out new stuff rather than work on their core products and what their customers used to love and still love. But it was again understandable with a model that they can produce everything in house and so they can come out with new things on the sly. Maybe not the most well thought of, a, of but new things really quickly. And it was clearly working from them because a lot of people had a collector's mentality when it came to color pop. Again, I think that this was cultivated in people because previously color pop was very stingy with their palettes. There weren't that many. They released maybe once every couple of months, three months, four months. And so it was easy to collect them. But now, regardless if they're cheap or not, people got used to collecting every single stupid ColourPop release. So you're now spending $12 every week, every two weeks, and that's if you're just getting the palette. $12 is still $12. It still makes a dent in your wallet, no matter how small. And for international customers, even more so. And I think that we were all 
groomed to want to have a collector's mentality by that easy slow pace earlier that slowly picked up until like a frog in boiling water we were not realizing that we were getting boiled alive in their releases but yet again i was like okay this is what they want their pace to be it's dumb i don't like it but it's not that sus but then i noticed that they were not restocking any of their old items, particularly items that were deeper and more inclusive. And that made me raise an eyebrow because on one hand you say that you can produce everything in warehouse on demand. So to me, it doesn't make sense to discontinue those even if you would say that they're not selling as well. Just make 20 or 30 at a time. Does it really have to be a lot? You don't have to make hundreds of thousands of SKUs. If you keep sustaining that your model is based on the fact that you can produce anything on the go, why do you not make a low amount of SKUs for the products that are beloved by a certain part of the community that is of a, of a deeper or medium tan skin tone instead of discontinuing it and leaving things only for the pale people? And even so, they have discontinued a bunch of stuff that worked well on other people as well and then they said it's because of covid but that doesn't add up why are you discontinuing stuff yet coming out with new stuff you say you don't have the ingredients you say you don't have the capacity and yet you're coming out with new releases so which which is it which is it because to me that shows that they're prioritizing new junk instead of beloved products that their company was known for and that people like they're prioritizing new junk that seems to be getting paler and paler less and less original for things more inclusive and that doesn't sit right with me a lot of their latest palettes except the wine and only or whatever the hell that was called worked only on people of my skin tone or maybe just a little bit darker but nobody truly darker than a paper towel there were several complaints from a lot of creators of color that their formula changed that it's ashier powderier less pigmented i don't have an opinion on that because i've not bought from ColourPop in the past year or so but to me it's why are you why are you praising yourself and sucking your own dick for being inclusive but you discontinue everything that works for people of color and you don't make eyeshadows that work for everyone like nobody says that any release has to be deeper tones but make variants make variants or maybe alternate releases make something pale one time something deeper the next for a company that brags about having all of these warehouse and production capacities it it has a very bad look because when you say oh we can produce these at a snap of our fingers then that tells me that your priorities are not with producing things that are good quality that are inclusive and that you prefer pumping out new releases for the collector's mentality rather than catering to all skin tones and that's sus oh i forgot to how could i forget to mention that fiasco with a native american palette oh god um in case you aren't on the internet all of the time because you have a life what happened was that colourpop came out with this sandstone palette the palette on the front had a pattern that was very important for um a certain type of Native American people. Colourpop's response was very wishy-washy to the outrage, which irked me, because first and foremost, it shows a lack of respect. Secondly, it shows a lack of care. As a graphic designer, it is your business. It is literally in your job description to make sure that the assets that you're using are not culturally appropriating that they're not insulting that they're not copyrighted uh, so it really shows that they this fast fashion model that they're applying is just getting them in hot water because it makes them not care about a, a lot of important things you cannot preach inclusivity and then insult a whole minority you cannot preach inclusivity and then not apologize properly when you manage to culturally appropriate something very important without giving any credit whatsoever everything feels rushed thoughtless it feels like they're just throwing product at us in the hope that it sticks even the collaborations are very low effort 
uh, most are not inclusive at all just the most basic shit you should you could come up with and it, I really miss the days of Colourpop when their releases were well thought of so to finish I dislike their attitude I dislike their lack of inclusivity I dislike the way that they say one thing but they're actually doing another regarding their production capacity and what they're actually doing with their stock I dislike their approach that they've had lately and I feel that they're being very sus and that they've forgotten what they were promising to deliver to make profit which unfortunately happens a lot the bigger a brand gets but nobody's holding a gun to my head and telling me you need to keep buying from Colourpop and I won't at least for quite a while until that they show that they've taken steps to remedy their insults towards minorities um, that they're taking steps to remedy their lack of inclusivity in anything but foundation and concealer I will keep using my Colourpop products because I paid money shipping and import fees on those I just want everyone to know because I have a platform and I have a duty to speak regarding these things that they're being sus so purchase with care purchase knowing who and what you're purchasing for from I won't judge you if you do because Colourpop is still a very good cheap drugstore option um, but I personally will not to be consistent with my principles and what I want to stand for so uh, there is that please let me know your thoughts down below I would love to hear them if I made any mistake during the video please correct me thank you guys so so much for watching and i hope you have a wonderful evening a morning second breakfast third lunch or whatever it is where you're from bye